The 1980s had been an incredibly successful decade for world's strongest man. As the contest travelled the globe, the rivalry between Bill Kazmaier, John Paul Sigmundson and Jeff Capes inspired the three men to superhuman displays of strength. The heavy loads had taken their toll. Capes had retired with serious shoulder complaints, and Kazmaier had damaged hamstrings and torn pectoral muscles so badly that he had a permanent hole in his chest. Sigmundson was also feeling the pressure. He drove his body to more and more unrealistic limits, desperate to become the first man to win four titles. He failed in 1989 as England's Jamie Reeves and Holland's Ab Volders beat him into third place. It was the Englishman's only title, although his involvement in the competition continued as a commentator and equipment designer until 2004. John Paul Sigmundson, Audie Wilson, on your marks and get set. In 1990, Things John looked Paul bleak Sigmund for Sigmundson as he prepared for the final the event. The American O.D. Wilson had dominated the contest the and only needed right, to avoid last English place in the brick race to be assured of victory. Title, his opponent needed something of a miracle. His task was to carry the 100 kilos of bricks around a 200-metre course in less than 53 seconds and hope that the American faltered. Look at the speed of John Paul Sigmundson and Halty Anderson falling on every inch of the way. Oh, he looks like he's tiring really, really badly. And Halty's watching that clock. Every second's going past, but look at the time. He's approaching the finishing line. He's got to beat 52, and he's done he's it! He's done it. Oh, he's got to finish in under one minute four now to assure himself of the title. It's a struggle. Let's see how the time is. Oh, no. John Paul's the champion. I told you all the time. I told you. I bloody told you. Odie Wilson well, would remain in many people's eyes the strongest man seen. never to John win the title. I'm not taking anything away from Simpson, but I feel within myself, within myself, that when it comes down to pure strength, I am the strongest man on this planet. But for the champion, it was all smiles. He was just a guy having a good time, making jokes, happy before, Happy after with the trophy, and uh, I think he was a great man. I'm a Viking! Sigmundson had achieved what many at the time thought impossible. He had overcome injury and an ever improving field of competitors to win four World's Strongest Man titles. He was the most successful strongman ever. I am the strongest! I am the Viking! Yes! But all the victories came at the highest cost. On the 16th of January, 1993, in his gym in Reykjavik, John Paul Sigmundson died of a massive heart attack. A congenital heart problem had been seriously compounded by years of intense training, competition and huge calorie and supplement intakes. One of the brightest lights of the strongman world had been extinguished. Everyone remembers where they were when they heard the news. And it was a really, really sad day because he was like the ambassador for Iceland, you know, good health, good condition, good looking. And, you know, he had everything, the charm, everything he had, and it was all taken away, you know, just in a one moment. John Paul died in January, and my son was born in the November of the same year, and we named him after him. And it's spelled the same way as well, Icelandic spelling, Jan Paul. He was a great guy, he really was. It was terrible. I was seven months pregnant. I thought it was so sad that he would never see my daughter grow up. He loved children. He called her shrimp because on the sonar image she looked just like a little shrimp. The whole experience was terrible. It was expensive to get to the the funeral and uh, there was no way I could afford it 
and they were into the pub one night, the Bonnie Prince Charlie, and they were all quite down. And uh, the manager came up to me and he handed me an envelope and there was a ticket in it for the funeral to go to Iceland. The, the club, the pub had, uh, had run raffles unbeknown to me and had uh, whip rounds and that to send me to the, to the Iceland for the funeral. And it was so moving. Just, it just put in perspective what people thought of him, that they would do this for him. And I managed to go back last yeah, two years ago in November, and it was so different, no snow on the ground, and uh, being able to see his, his headstone with the picture in it and that, it was very moving. He was a good guy.